Hello, I'm Maureen O'Connor. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about building uh, a product culture and building a healthy team. Um, so I've worked with lots of different product teams, different industries, different places, but I see very similar cultural factors behind all of them. So I'm going to put on my metaphorical lab coat and stethoscope and talk about how to build a healthy culture, not a toxic one, and how to build up a strong immune system for your team. So if you're wanting to grow a healthy product culture, you want to start with your diagnosis, start understanding the culture that exists. Um, are you in a new company with a fragile culture that's not yet formed? Is it a well-established and complex organism? Um, culture, culture depends on the personalities in the team, context of the company, maybe the location, the age of it, the size of it. So a media startup is going to have a very different culture to a bank, for example. Uh, you can't grow something from nothing, so if you've got your uh, whatever they are in your petri dish, you know, you've got to start with something to, to grow it. And you can't change one organism into another, and the same with, with teams and with organisations. So that bank might like to be acting more like that media startup, but you can't just magic one into another. That's inevitable that there's different constraints, uh, different inherited cultural factors, and you've got to work with what you've got. But you can influence how the culture grows uh, for good or for ill. So one thing that any organism needs to grow is nutrition. Your team needs the right resources to grow. So that might be money, time, people, access to information. Uh, you can starve a team to death or you can make them unhealthy on a junk food diet. And uh, so, as we know, an imbalanced diet uh, is, is going to make you unhealthy. An imbalanced team isn't going to make for healthy products, healthy teams. Um, diversity matters. So in the same way that you need to eat lots of different types of foods, you need different people in your team. And um, that's why I think it's, it's always useful to think about diversity, not in terms of where people are from or who they are. It's about different ways of thinking about things and having different ways to approach a problem that's going to be a much stronger, healthier team to do that. Um, it's also possible to have too much of a good thing. It is possible to have too much money. And, uh, <laughs> in, well, on, on a personal level, well, talk to me later, but um, in, uh, I think some of us, I know some of us have seen situations where uh, you're working on something where you've just thrown money at the problem and that's, that's not the answer. More stuff leads to more complexity, and that's usually a bad thing. Um, your organism needs space to grow, so you won't grow your healthy culture in a confined space. You can't grow a tree in a plant pot. You also can't build a team in an area where they're not given space. Uh, you need to provide the resources, and then you need to let the team have space to get on with things. So shouting at a team to go faster is no more effective than yelling at your tree to grow faster. That isn't going to get you anywhere. Um, a new product team in a large company may well be crowded out by existing things. So if you're thinking of that shrub in a rainforest, it's over, overshadowed by, um, by other uh, more uh, established trees and plants and, and what have you. If you're wanting to build something new in an existing place, you've got to actively clear the space for it to grow, otherwise it'll get overshadowed and starved by the things that are already there. Rest and recovery is important for growing healthy things and same for your team. Uh, your team will become sick and unhealthy without enough rest. So it might seem tempting to pull nighters and work weekends, but it's false economy if the team's weaker in the future. So an organism needs rest in order to grow sustainably. So does your team. And you need warmth and safety and all of that fuzzy stuff. You need to protect a growing organism from pathogens and environmental things. You also need to shield your team from danger. You'll be aware of the world around your team that will threaten it. It will maybe try to take you off in a direction you don't want to be going in or just distracting you from your purpose. Um, especially the scrum masters amongst us, that shielding the team from, from danger and protecting them is... Uh, is, is really important. Whether that's uh, uh, that fragile startup that's just needing to be established, or whether you're in that larger company that is stronger but less adaptable, 
and you're having to work around the structure. So, sometimes you're in a situation with toxic cultures. This is MRSA. It's very bad. It'll kill you. So, how do you avoid building up the building up toxic culture, or what do you what, what can you recognise of um, a, a toxic culture? So, uh, your uh, your place it might be unfit and unhealthy. So maybe an organisation has got old and inflexible, maybe a little bit fat, probably can't sprint as fast, it's not as agile as a younger, fitter competitor. But all is not lost. It is possible to get into shape, but you can't do it overnight. And this is back to the, you can't transform one type of company into another, you equally can't transform overnight. But you can make change in a sustainable way by starting small and building on small sustainable changes that aren't too far out the comfort zone, building up to the more radical changes later on. Um, I often find that you know, on the sort of micro level, day to day, you, it can be really disheartening because it just never looks like you're getting somewhere. But you, if you step back, you can see that over time, it's amazing what can be done if you're just taking a small step every day. Um, so what else can lead to a toxic culture? So uh, the, I've got this idea of, of infection. So bad attitudes can poison a team. So maybe like, uh, like that MRSA that's infecting uh, your, your, uh, your organism. Bad attitudes can poison the team. And it's crucial to act fast to deal with um, an infection. And sometimes companies are too weak to respond in the same way that uh, you know, if sometimes your, your, your body's immune system really struggles to fight off the, the infection. Uh, some companies do. And sometimes a company is not going to be strong enough to overcome its challenges to build a better culture, build better products. And sometimes the right thing to do is to walk away. So I like this one. This is a toxic culture when they've rejected the mainstream. I don't know if you've, you've heard the, uh, your, your clients say, oh, well, we're different for everybody else. The way we do things, it's, it's, it's not relevant. You know, all those, those good practices you keep telling me about, we're different, we're special. And we've got this guy that says that if we do things this way, it's going to be brilliant. Um, be, be very wary of the, um, the product equivalent of alternative medicine. There is always somebody that will sell you something tarted up with a different name and a different package and take all your money from you. Um, there are quacks and fads in medicine, and there definitely are in software as well. You know, you see medicines uh, get reformulated, repackaged, very slightly different molecule, or sell it back to you for 10 times the money. Well, I'm sure there's a new Agile this week with a new title that somebody is charging. That's generally nonsense. So, other things are maybe just the environment is entirely inhospitable. Companies go through life cycles, same as organisations do, um, organisms do. And um, you do get this decline and fall. You can try to grow a culture and influence it and change it, but it won't matter if the surrounding environment is hostile. Uh, you can't grow bananas in the Arctic and you can't grow that tree in the plant pot that I mentioned. So if you're trying to build a product in an environment with massive ob obstacles, uh, whether that's outside the organisation or maybe from within it, um, you've got to learn to recognise when it's not going to work. And don't feel bad about the things that you can't change. If, you're, if you can't work with something, you've got to recognise that maybe you want to be looking at things in a different way. So that's all the toxic stuff. What about influencing cultural growth? and building up this immune system of the organisation. Uh, that's penicillin. It's really pretty, that one. All of the other pictures of penicillin are rotten fruit balls <laughs> and things like that. But I didn't feel like that, that gave quite the right impression. <laughs> so uh, to influence your cultural growth, you need good hygiene. You need to follow good practices. So things like the retrospectives, it's quite easy that in the thick of the day-to-day -day of this, the urgent stuff that you've got on, you can let these things slip. But it's really important to keep up those good practices and that hygiene of, of all your, your ceremonies. And, and don't let the urgent distract you from the important. That's a quote I got from the West Wing. Um, 
also build up antibodies. So learn from your mistake. So in your immune system, uh, if, you've, if a familiar pathogen is spotted, your body's got um, antibodies that will punt them down and kill it before it causes harm. So if you spot that you're about to repeat a mistake, if your team is in a similar sort of situation, spot it, step it in early and intervene as soon as you see an issue. Or even better, vaccination. Learn from somebody else's mistakes. Much better, much faster. So uh, keep coming up to date with, your, with what your colleagues and your competitors are doing and learning from what they've done and applying it to your place is um, much more uh, efficient and less painful than learning all the mistakes yourself. So, you know, make the time to, to talk to people that are on different engagements and, and, uh, and share with what you're doing. Um, sometimes you need more drastic action, you need surgery. If the, if the team is very damaged, if, there's, if there are very, very serious things wrong, you might need to take uh, drastic action. Uh, you need to cut away the damaged tissue so that the healthy tissue can grow back. Surgery is always unpleasant, difficult, dangerous, but it's better than the alternative. And um, I was talking to, to John about this, and he said, but who's the anaesthetist? And I thought, well, that's very good, too, because the anaesthetist's job is to keep the patient alive during surgery. And that's always worth bearing in mind when you are involved in these radical change programmes, that it's all very well seeing what you need to do to, you know, to make that change, to do that surgery. It's just as important to keep the patient alive through those changes and uh, get them back on their feet afterwards. Um, and then uh, medicine as well, so maybe the immune system needs a bit of help. So perhaps your body could be uh, fighting back on, uh, from an infection on its own, but maybe you'll come through the other end uh, weaker, maybe it'll take you longer to, to get well. So if you can get the right medicine, then it can get you, um, you better faster. And I'd like to think that's what we do for our clients, that maybe they can struggle on with their problems, but by getting the right people in at the right time, um, we can help them uh, make their businesses stronger. Um, and fundamentally, it's all about having a balanced lifestyle. You know, health, so in your own lives, having a you know, healthy, balanced uh, diet and lots of rest and exercise and all of that healthy stuff. And the same for your team. So keeping the discipline of, uh, of, of the rituals and learning from your mistakes, all of those other things. So yeah, remember to exercise, eat a balanced diet and wash your hands regularly. I'm not really sure what that's got to do with anything, but it's always very good advice. So I encourage you to do that. And I've, I've actually raced through that um, and I've got to the end and I've tortured that metaphor plenty. So I'm happy to stop there and go on to questions. <laughs>